is to say Happy New Year and Merry Christmas. So <laughs> it's fine, I guess. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm very happy to uh, uh, introduce the three societies. We are continuing our tour of the uh, members of E3S. And we will we'll start today with uh, the uh, Spanish uh, Professional Association of Sensory Science, IPAS, I'm not sure I pronounce it well, and Amparo uh, Tarrega will represent it. And then we'll move to the Swiss group, uh, which is called the Food Sensory Science Group, or EG Sensoric. And Barbara and Annette uh, will present it. And then we'll um, finish with the Irish Society, and Sinead uh, will present that. that uh, that group. And uh, just one quick note. Uh, so if you have questions or comments, uh, don't hesitate to leave them in the chat and uh, we'll gather all these questions and, uh, and I'll ask them again uh, after the three presentations. Uh, so if everything's okay, uh, so I leave the floor to Amparo um, about the Spanish Association. Okay, thank you, Julien. Um... Julian, and can you hear me, please? I want just to check. Okay, and happy new year to all of you. I am going to share my presentation now. So, can you see it? Yeah, it's not in presentation mode yet. No, it's not. Now? Perfect, yeah. It's okay, thank you very much. So, well, it's a pleasure for me to introduce the Spanish Association of Professionals in Sensory Science. First, I want to show you who we are. We are these people. We are the members of the society. Are, it changes depending on the year, but are regularly 80 to 90 members. We have like 70 individual memberships, uh, members. That from them, 20 more or less 20 are students, and we also have corporate members that are these ones, and they are mainly uh, food companies or food research institute or agencies of sensory and consumer studies. Okay, so when I pass started. So all begin uh, in the fourth euro sense in, in 2010. Well, and these people, these nine people, uh, started to make the rules of the society. The beginnings of the AEPA society started run in parallel to the beginnings of the European Sensory Society. So even if they started in, in 2010, the AEPAS uh, was registered as a society in the 2011. So this year was we were celebrating the 10th anniversary, but we have still not celebrated. We are starting and we hope because of the COVID, we hope to we will celebrate this year, next year. Uh, so most of these people uh, that uh, did the effort of build what now is uh, AEPAS, we want to give thanks to them. They, they were the, most of them were the members of the first ball. And I want to mention especially to the chair of this first ball, Elvira Coste, that this year we are very happy because she has received a mention, she had a paint in a wall uh, as a, a recognized to the uh, as she as pioneer as a pioneer woman in science so this there has been in the board uh, two renovations and now this is the IPAS board members we are seven the chair vice chair secretary and also the treasurer and other three members here you can see but well we are going to to pass to the activities so the main goal of AEPAS is to favor or promote the exchange knowledge the and to exchange the the knowledge in sensory science and for that the main activities that we have are the courses and workshops 
one conference that we do every two years. Also, we participate in the working groups. We have organized several prizes, and now we are finishing a book on sensory and consumer science. All these activities you can see in the web of AEPAS, and also there are other announcements that are in the, for interest of the members, like job offers in sensory and so on. Okay, so the courses are probably the most, the activity or the activity that that most more useful for members, I think. And we have we run regularly these four courses. They are organized by different institutions, apart from IEPAS, they are organized in collaboration with different institutions that uh, from members of IEPAS. And the the lectures are from uh, from members of AEPAS that are experts in the specific field. So we have a, a course in sense in introduction on in sensory analysis that has been there has been like already four editions and we hope this year in May we will have we will have the fifth edition. We have also a, a course in sensometrics that that is also always very success and when well, all of them are always uh, full so we think that they are quite the people <clears throat> like quite a lot the the discourses and recently we have we have included the courses in consumer and also in rapid method in sensory analysis well, uh, the courses usually are three or four days depending on the on the course but we have also other activities that are shorter and more specific in a topic uh, workshops sorry or seminars there are workshops on seminars on a specific topic like uh, for example hats on a hands on a software of sensory analysis or sensory or, or statistical analysis and so on so we have coming soon we hope so because of covid i don't know if finally we will be able to organize a workshop in sensory evaluation as a tool in quality control for pdos uh, we have also since 2015 a conference that is organized every two years so uh, the first was in Ciudad Real and there were 100 attendees and the, the number has increased until 130 of attendees. So the conference is every two years and we, <clears throat> and the three days of duration, uh, there are interesting, uh, is the national for us, is the national conference in sensory analysis and we have very interesting uh, works we have had very interesting works in presented as oral communication flash presentation or posters and we had a very very interesting lectures also uh, from members of all society national or from the other societies european societies or from other countries like you can see in the screen i think you, most of them are quite well known for you so i think it's very interesting this conference but i, I think what we most enjoy is the tastings and also the show cooking the the show the cooking shows and also the 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 opportunity for uh, networking and connecting to each other that we enjoy a lot of during our meals that we talk a lot of about sensory and consumer science so that's why we are quite sad because this year 20 in, in 2021 we should have our conference but it had to be postponed and we hope we will have our 
ne our next conference in June 2022. And I think it will be, we are excited to be there because it's in La Rioja. So it's uh, the, one of the best places to have a conference in sensory. And here you can see the lecturers that we will have. So if you want to join us, just now is open the the abstract submission, so you can you can come. Uh, regarding the working groups uh, or the uh, the IPAS members participating most, there are members of IPAS participating in most of the European. Uh, well, the H3S uh, working groups like the children, the education, the PDO, and the taste sensitivity groups. But we have one uh, working group specific of uh, dysphagia. I will talk later about that. So about that, I want to mention <clears throat> the, the special relevant or participation of the of the members of the IPA members in the working group of the PDOs. Uh, here we can see Apache Perez Leotón. I think you, most of you know him. And together with Mario Zanoni from CIS, they were coordinating this group. And the, the, the efforts of the work that they did in this working group, finally, ha they have reached uh, this guideline for sensory analysis of of video products and that has been published, edited by, by them and has been published. And now I think most of you have it, this book that they have, this guideline that they have edited. Now there are new coordinators for this working group that are also members from AEPAS. Okay, so we have also the AEPAS, as I say, uh, the working group on dysphagia that started three years ago uh, in a meeting that they had. <clears throat> Here you can see some of them. And this, the objective of this group is mainly to improve the quality of the sensory and texture properties of the food for dysphagia sufferers. And I think this is a quite interesting or quite good um, working group if they succeed because sensory science or sensory knowledge can help, I think, to, I think, I think they can help a lot of to improve this kind, these products the, for this fascia people. Then I want also to show you the, some of the activities of the students. So the first international meeting of uh, students of the European Sensory Society was organized by AEPAS in Madrid in 2017. And then the, there, there was only an edition because they then the students and every career uh, group changed it to, a, to another format, a, a webinar <coughs> of knowledge exchange. And in the second edition of this a webinar where the Spanish student or the, the AEPAS student who, part, who presented in this, in this webinar. And uh, finally, for promoting this or for promoting all the, the students' work or the participation in the con conference and so on, uh, we have different awards. We have the award for students to attend the IPAS conference that uh, they they have the registration free and they receive money for, for traveling and for the accommodation. Also, we are starting the IPAS award for the best PhD thesis in sensory science. The first edition will be the 2022. And we have an award to thank those professionals from other disciplines that have collaborating in AEPAS activities. And also, this is the first edition. And finally, I want to show you that this book, AEPAS book, what we call, so is uh, is one of the goals that the that people are starting, uh, that 
starting the AEPAS, the society wanted to, was one of the main goals to do a book in Spanish about sensory and consumers. And now we are, I think it is coming soon in June because it is almost finished. So it is a book on sensory and consumer methodology and, and guides. There are seven chapters, there are more than 600 pages and 40 authors. For, <clears throat> it is edited, edited by two uh, members of AEPA and we are waiting for it. I think that's all that I wanted to tell you about AEPAS and if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll keep the questions for uh, the end. Okay. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, thank you very much. And congratulations, because it's very impressive, all you, uh, everything you, you, you've done. And uh, I should have mentioned also that, te although technically it was before the creation of E3S, the, the, I think the fourth uh, edition of Eurosense was organized in Spain in Vitoria Gasteiz, as I remember. And also, I, I want to acknowledge the uh, the very active contribution of uh, Pachi and Carolina in the creation of E3S, and especially Carolina, who uh, was the, the immediate past chair of, uh, of the society. So thank you very much. And thank now we'll move, <laughs> we'll move on with the um, uh, Swiss group. And uh, I will leave the floor to uh, another founding member <laughs> and very active participants, uh, Barbara Kugendu. Yeah, uh, and Annette Bongartz. Yeah, Julia, thank you very much. Um, well, uh, welcome from Switzerland and welcome from IG Sensorik. We are very happy to have the opportunity to bring our little society a little closer to you and your attention today. We, that means, already mentioned the actual co-coordination team of our group, um, Barbara Guggenbühl, working at the National Research Institute Agroscope in Bern, who will take over for the second part of the presentation, and me, Annette Bongartz, working at the Zurich University of Applied Sciences in Wensi. Well, um, let's start um, with some information about our beginnings. Back in the 70s, for the first time, sensory workshops and trainings were organized at ETH Zurich, mainly by Jörg Solms, Felix Escher, Ruth Genner, and many others. And in the beginning, these activities were um, heavily supported by internationally very well-known sensory scientists, like, for example, Howard Moskowitz. And later, more and more international contacts, for example, as well to Rosemary Pangborn and others, helped implementing sensory science uh, within research on the one side and industry in Switzerland. Then in the 90s, uh, a very loose network of interested persons did arise, and this finally was integrated in 2001, we think, <laughs> into the Swiss Society of Food Science and Technology. And it represents an independent working group within this mother organization since then. SKLBT is a non-profit organization of around about uh, 700 members, coming mainly from industry, retail, university, and research. <clears throat> well, um, IG Sensorik itself is coordinated by an eight-member steering committee. Different resource and responsibilities are divided among them. And in rotation, always two members of the steering committee take over the main lead um, and the coordination of the group for a certain uh, defined time period. Altogether, IG Sensorik uh, consists of 92 members at the moment. Um, more or less active. Most of them are members uh, of the superordinated SKVT and joined additionally to be an active member of our sensory group. And as you can see here on the slide, <coughs> members come from different areas too. Most of them, around 50 together, come from industry as well um, as university and research. Well, um, let's hear what some at least of them have to say. My name is Mark Lutz, as president of the SKMBT. I am stolz auf the activities of the IG Sensor. My name is Saskia, live from the cabins of the Berner Fachhochschule for Agrar, Forst and Lebensmittelwissenschaften. Hi, I am Robert from Sensor Plus. 
Hello everybody, I am Suzanne. Hallo zusammen, hier ist das Wanderzeit Sonic Panel in Neuenek in der Region Bern und wir grüßen euch ganz herzlich. Für unser tägliches Kontakt mit unserem Produkt werden wir sensorisch gefordert, was uns natürlich auch im Alltag begleitet. Und Sensorik ist ja so, dass wir alltäglich beeinflusst werden. Sei es gefühlsmässig oder auch lustmässig. Die Qualität ist, wenn der Kunde zurückkommt und nicht das Produkt. Da spielt die Sensorik eine wichtige Rolle. Und die Sensorik fasziniert mich dass sie die Komplexität der menschlichen Sinneswahrnehmung auf einen unserer wichtigsten Grundbedürfnisse in Verbindung bringt. Essen. Die Dorik hat für mich immer noch wahnsinnig viel Faszinierendes an sich. Und wir tun es, ob wir wollen oder nicht, auch in unserem täglichen Leben immer einbauen. Weil wir essen ja eigentlich das, was uns gut tut. Und wir schauen eigentlich immer, dass wir das ein super Genusserlebnis haben. Wir brauchen Sensoren in der öffentlichen Situation. Wir finden, dass wir auch in der Evaluation von unseren Produkten ich joined the EG Sensoric because I like the exchange with the members to talk about current developments in the sensory area. And for me personally, I like to connect the dots in this big data cloud of product evaluation to improve the products for the clients. Ich bin der Ike Sensorik, dass ich mich mit anderen Fachpersonen, die sich mit der Sensorik befassen, kann vernetzen kann und mich austauschen zu Sensorik-Themen. Our company Sensor Plus offers software and services for sensory evaluation. These guidelines for professional sensory awards we developed in cooperation with Everscope and the Zurich University of Applied Sciences. It is the result of the Ike Sensorik Working Group. Die IG Sensorik ermöglicht eine schweizweite Verflechtung von Lehre, Forschung und Industrie. Die Aktivitäten in der Arbeitsgruppe Ringversuche und in der IG Sensorik sind für mich die Möglichkeit, mich zu aktuellen Sensorik-Themen auszutauschen, neue Ideen überzukommen und auch selber können kreativ sein können. I love the exchange in sensor analysis and it talks about food. <lacht> Unsere Lieblingsprodukte sind natürlich malzhaltige und kakaohaltige Produkte, da kann man gar nicht weg davon. Und was wir besonders gerne machen, ist einfach das Profilieren von Produkten und vor allem das Beurteilen in einem von den Produkten. Mein persönlicher Favorit ist selbstgemachte Chili-Soße. Die passt zu fast allen. Die Lieblingslebensmittel? Und ich würde eher sagen, die Lieblingsmakronährstoffe sind ganz klar die Proteine. Weshalb? Weil gerade extrem viel passiert auf diesem Gebiet und die Forschungsmöglichkeiten unendlich sind. Ich müsste entscheiden, welches Lebensmittel ich an einem einsamen Ort würde mitnehmen würde. Dann würde ich mich für den großen Teil von Käse entscheiden, was ganz wichtig ist. Die Apple ist my unique experience with all my senses. Well, you heard and saw some very uh, authentic original statements from our members and this gave you already some hints concerning our main activities, of course. On the one hand, uh, we organize regular meetings and workshops and on the other hand, our working groups uh, focus on three competitive topics in the field of sensory and uh, additionally, of course, we try to contribute contribute to the E3S uh, working groups. Barbara will pick up this uh, later. Well, um, hold on. <laughs> Uh, let's have a quick look at former meetings and workshops as planned um, uh, and planned events for the upcoming years. Now, um, as you can see, in the very first years of IG Sensorik, uh, we picked up topics and questions that were rather fundamental and broadly interesting. 
Um, sorry, all the titles are in German, of course. Um, there were topics like sensory methods in food industry, how to set up good sensory panels, how to um, uh, apply sensory methodologies in product development and so on. After a break of around four years and followed by a relaunch of our group in 2010 and 11, for the first time sensory working groups were set up and in 2012 for the first time we organized the meeting focusing on consumer aspects. Our last and probably biggest national meeting so far took place in um, 2017, focusing uh, as well on market aspects. The motto was success on the market with all of our senses. For this event, speakers from outside SKLVT or IG Sensorik, as well as international speakers like, for example, Jean-Marc Siefermann from uh, Agro uh, Paritech uh, were invited. Well, coming from national to international, one very big event and an absolute highlight for us uh, over the years, especially for Patrizia Piccinali, my former colleague in the group coordination, and me was the hosting of Eurosense uh, 2012 in Bern. Here you can see some nice pictures and, of course, memories. Uh, a sense of inspiration was really an inspiration for us and our whole group at that time. Well, directly after uh, Eurosense 12, uh, 2012, uh, we identified some synergies and together with our German-speaking neighbors, the DG Sense from Germany, the Sensory Network from Austria, and we, the Swiss IG Sensorik, we created together um, a first so-called DACH meeting. Um, the meeting took place in the southern part of Germany, so all members of all uh, societies could reach um, this very well. Well, and what's coming next? Um, in fact, right now, a revival of this uh, collaboration among the three German-speaking countries starts, and the goal is to organize a next DACH meeting in 2023, exactly 10 years after the first one, and, of course, hopefully in presence and without too many COVID uh, restrictions. And in 2024, well, it's a long time until then, we plan to revive our tradition in national uh, meetings. And of course, this um, is to be continued. Well, now I'm handing over to Barbara. And uh, for the time uh, uh, so far, I thank for your attention. Yeah, hello, everybody from my side. Um, so I will guide you through like more practical things we are doing in uh, at the IG Sensoric. So, as similar to several other countries, also within the Swiss Sensory Society, specific sensory topics are handled in the form of working groups. All members of the society can bring up topics and ask if there are other members who are interested in collaboration and then form a specific working group. At the moment, there are three active working groups. You saw the results of one of them already in the video as they have launched the final product and at the moment they are not active anymore. Starting with the first test round in 2014, the working group of the proficiency test has the longest history of activity. It is quite obvious that the main objective is getting information about the panel performance and to compare results with other panels. All interested panels can participate. And at the moment, we are act act about four to five panels are active, coming from industry, research organizations, and universities. The group is performing tests in the field of descriptives as well as discriminative testing. Next slide. <laughs> I think for us, it was clear that we want to work with real foods and not only uh, equate solutions. So we were looking for foods as test samples, and we started with samples coming from the market. And over the years, we developed a test set of apple juices, which we can manipulate in a standardized way. And more recently, we started uh, to do discriminative testing um, with like test methods, which are commonly used, such as triangle test, paired comparison, and ranking. And 
with a lot of different food items, so to be able to address different sensory modalities. We do four test rounds per year, and the tests are considered as panel training for several panel leaders, so we can really uh, do kind of save time to do like really the, the two things together. The, the next slide, please. As in several other countries, sensory claims is a topic which is particular uh, is of particular interest, especially for industry. And based on the ISO standard 2784, the working group aims to develop specific guidelines, including also method methodology for Switzerland. And the fact that in Switzerland we have four official languages makes the life for this working group really not too easy. The third active working group with the informative title projects was initiated when the Austrian Sensory Society asked whether Switzerland is interested in participating in the project Smells Like Teen Spirit. Some of you might know this already and have actively partic participated as well. The aim was to study the association of artists to age categories. It was for us the first co collaboration on a scientific topic within the IG Sensoric, coming from industry, universities, and research institutions. The main interest for us in Switzerland was to study whether there are differences and associations between regions within different language regions with the intention to be representative for the different language regions we tested around 550 persons in the german french and italian speaking court and for that we had the challenge to also translate the questionnaires the results of the swiss uh, participation was presented as a poster at the Tangborn symposium last year and we also plan to do a common publication the, the members uh, was, were positively, uh, the, the experience for all the members was very positive. So the group decided to continue the scientific collaboration and there are already interesting ideas for new projects. The last working group, uh, which is called awards, is not active anymore, as I already mentioned, and the work or the activities resulted in guidelines on sample material, test persons and methods for the implementation of national food competitions. The guidelines were, form, were published in form of a flyer and is available, the flyer is available for free for all interested organizers and other persons. As, um, as already mentioned by the Spanish uh, so Association, we are active in the working groups of D3S. And as the Spanish, especially the participation in the group of education and taste sensitivity has to be mentioned, and not at least uh, the, the, the activity of the, in the PDO group. Especially the participation in the P PDA group has a very long tra tradition in Switzerland, since Switzerland is a founding member of this working group and has been particularly active in the subgroup me method accreditation. Switzerland was also hosting the annual meeting of the PDO working group alongside the Eurosense conference 2012 in Bern, which was already mentioned by uh, Onette. And in 2017 was presenting the work of the group at an international meeting on a local product contest in Courtemelon, a very small Swiss village, which is normally hosting one of the regional food competitions. In addition to the two ladies mentioned by Amparo, in the future, the IG Sensoric will coordinate with the Spanish ladies, the working group. And at the moment, we focus uh, at the forming of the subgroups and defining the topics and products to be studied. And it is the idea to focus not only on PDO products, 
but also include regional, regional products. So that was the Swiss bouquet, the sensory bouquet, and we thank you very much for your attention, and we are happy to answer questions at the end of the webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much to both of you. Um, I, I, this is a, a really good uh, illustration of how diverse is our field. I'm always impressed. So <laughs> thank you for that. Um, so we are just on time. So I think we can move uh, on with the next presentation from Sinead McCarthy uh, to present the Irish Society. Sinead, floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, can everybody see yes. my screen? Okay, because I, I can't see any of you anymore. Um, good afternoon, everybody. And it's our great pleasure to present um, about the Sensory Food Network Ireland for the 10th anniversary of the European Sensory Science Network. Um, I'm presenting on behalf of the, the full group. I picked the, the short straw <laughs> um, and uh, along with Emer Gallagher and Emily Crofton. We are the coordinators of Sensory Food Network Ireland. Um, Sensory Food Network Ireland was established um, back in 2014 following a funding research call from the Irish Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine. Um, through this funding call, there was a, a significant gap identified in sensory food science across the island of Ireland. At this stage, most of the sensory analysis and industry sensory analysis was being sent abroad to be undertaken. The resources and facilities that were available on the island of Ireland weren't necessarily obvious. So the role of Sensory Food Network Ireland was to bring together all of the different facilities and expertise that exist on the island of Ireland and bring them under the one national umbrella of Sensory Food Network Ireland. So the, the research call itself began in 2013 and in 2014, we received the funding from the Department of Agriculture and started to exist as a fully functioning network. The network partners are, are, come from across the, the full island of Ireland. Starting in Dublin, we have three partners, Technical University Dublin, University College Dublin and ourselves, Chagas. And as we go into Northern Ireland, we've AFB, Caffrey and the University of Ulster. Coming down the west of Ireland, we've St. Angela's College and Galway Mayo Institute of Technology. Limerick Institute of Technology, University College Cork, and one of our second research institutions in the south of Ireland, um, Chagas Moor Park. Um, we're not just icons and logos of universities. These are the, the real people behind all of the logos. This was a picture taken at our launch in 2014, or 2015 rather, when, when the network had its first public event with all of the partners from the various institutions uh, across the island. And um, those were the days before social distancing and, and mask wearing, and we were allowed to meet in the one place and, and sit beside each other without a, a two meter distance. So there's a lot of expertise across each of the institutions and Sensory Food Network Ireland, the, the aim was to bring together all of the various expertise under the one umbrella of Sensory Food Network Ireland. We have, um, across a number of the institutions, we have consumer research facilities, culinary arts facilities, texture science, flavor chemistry, science of appearance, market research, and these all come together in, in the one grouping then of Sensory Food Network Ireland. When we started the network, we began with a very ambitious vision, and that was to be recognised as delivering a comprehensive and excellent sensory science service to the food industry on the island by setting, maintaining and upgrading standards, by fostering collaboration between industry and research organisations, and by driving performance improvements throughout the network. And um, we were probably naive in 2014 to set such an ambitious vi vision, but luckily um, through hard work and dedication across every participant in the network, we have very much realised this vision and follow it in all of the work that we undertake. 
the there are three main activities or core activities if you like associated with the with the network and the first one is providing a service to the food and beverage industry and as i had mentioned previously a lot of the industry work that was taking place on the island of ireland was actually was, was actually being exported off the island and done elsewhere because there wasn't a recognition of the different capabilities and facilities at the different research institutions across the island so we can now provide a service to industry through the either through the network or the individual partners across the network. As a part of the network, we also undertook um, quite a thorough research um, programme looking at um, different aspects of, of sensory science from developing new methodologies to looking at cross-cultural scientific studies as well. Um, and as a result of this, we've increased the, the capability in sensory science on the island of Ireland, thereby providing more graduates as well um, to work in the area of sensory science in the food industry. And this had been seen as one of the aspects that we needed to, a, a remit we needed to fulfill as well within the network. And then third Thirdly, education is also a very important aspect of the network's activities in terms of developing and promoting um, and delivering training programs for both food industry and also developing additional education opportunities and qualifications for sensory science as well. So the education aspect takes quite a broad remit. In terms of industry, since the since the start of Sensory Food Network Ireland, we've had significant activity in the delivery of sensory service, services to many clients, ranging from artisan clients to small medium enterprises and many multinationals as well who are based in Ireland. What we tend to find is the, the, the work and services that we deliver to industry reflects the main agricultural commodities that are produced in Ireland. So milk, beef, sheep, pig and cereals would um, be the food topics that we cover quite a bit within our our day to day client interaction with with industry. Um, here we have Emma and Amalia showing off their um, facilities in University College Dublin and I think I know um, Emma I think is on the call here as, as well today. Um, in the research programme we looked at identifying and developing new and emerging sensory techniques and um, one of these is using digital technologies and, and VR headsets and total immersion and looking at the sensory measurements during during total immersion using using VR technology. We've also looked at cross-cultural sensory perception, looking at um, differences in taste perception between Asian consumers and Irish consumers. And, and this was very evident in some dairy products where different flavors were being detected in the different products. Genetic variation in taste has been looked at quite extensively in, in UCD, as has product formulation, reformulation across many of the partners within the network, looking at the sensory sensory implications of changing product formulation and um, from a fat, salt and sugar reduction perspective, which is being recommended in terms of achieving um, healthier eating guidelines across the population. And then also more recently, we've been looking at sustainable foods and consumer accept acceptance and sustainable diets, meat alternatives in the diet and so on have been very much um, to the fore of what what constitutes a sustainable diet. And we've been looking at some of these considerations and what the consumer acceptance of these aspects would be as well. Um, as well as the, the, the research itself, um, we have enhanced collaboration across all partners within the network. And some of this has also led to cross-centre mobility with the students where they can take time to work in any of the partners' institutions across the island and develop new skills or get to use other research facilities in the other institutions. And then also developing a, a stable nucleus of high quality sensory research. So rather than being fragmented now, we all come together um, in developing our research, developing sensory research proposals. And um, recently we used all of the network to um, look at a study on taste and smell and COVID um, last summer. And we've started to publish some work from that recently as well. 
training and education is the, the third arm, if you like, of Sensory Food Network Ireland. We have undertaken many training workshops, um, both bespoke and general for food industry, um, covering many different topics from methods, quality control, new product development, and a range of levels of these workshops as well to suit the expertise of the audience in terms of some companies who are only starting to perhaps implement um, sensory panels or sensory work in their industry to those companies who would have um, much higher levels of, of sensory expertise. And some of the training has been bespoke in-house specific to a particular company when required. We've also contributed to and developed additional third level education courses. So a new sensory course has been developed in Galway Mayo Institute of Technology. The research within the Sensory Food Network Ireland has also led to graduates with PhDs and MSCs in sensory science. And more recently, Emily Crofton, who's also on the call from Chagas and other colleagues from the network have developed an accredited IFST foundation level course in sensory science. And in here we see from University of Ulster, we have Amy Burns showing off some of the new products that she has been working on with with food industry. Then dissemination and communication has been a, a core element of all of the work that we've been doing across Sensory Food Network Ireland. So uh, we've had the, the training courses and seminars and workshops as well. We have had lay technical publications as well as peer review publications, communication campaigns and media engagement with radio, TV and printed media interviews. And we very frequently work with schools, universities and industry with outreach activities and in particular activities with schools and young scientists exhibitions and, and so on. And then we also have some international um, activities. We have been part, we became part of the European Sensory Science Society in 2015 in Oslo and that was followed a, a very exciting event en route to Oslo from Dublin when Emily and Agnes and myself were in an emergency landing and um, had a stopover in Aberdeen and to show our commitment to the joining the network we got back on the plane um, and made our way onwards to Oslo and joined um, the European Sensory Science Society in 2015. Um, since then, I have been a board member since 2016 at the, the following meeting that took place in Paris. And since the 2019 meeting in Milan, I, I was vice chair until last um, summer. We hosted the General Assembly and Symposium in 2018 in Dublin and had great fun at that and really enjoyed having everybody and welcoming everybody to Ireland. And we were successful in our bid last May to host Eurosense in Dublin in 2024. So that's going to be one of the big events for us um, and a lot of planning and organising over the next two years for that event. And this was the, the, the first Eurosense meeting that I had the pleasure of going to along with some of my colleagues. And here are some pictures of what were happy, smiling faces in Dublin a few years ago that we hope to welcome back and see happy and smiling in Dublin again in 2024. And finally, these are all of our contact details for anybody who would like to get in touch in terms of collaboration, information sharing, resource sharing. We're more than happy to collaborate with everybody. And finally, just in terms of our involvement with European Sensory Science Society, we very much have Joanne Hort to thank for that. Um, and in 2015, when we joined E3S, Joanne was the chair of E3S at the time. And when we were putting forward our funding proposal to form Sensory Food Network Ireland, Joanne gave us great support, lending letters of support from E3S to our bid to form a network within Ireland and E3S have been very welcoming um, to us since we formed and joined in 2015. So I'd like to say thank you to, to E3S for, for the opportunities presented to us as being part of the, the bigger network that is the, the European network. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ned. And uh, you you indeed made uh, a spectacular arrival to it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, our our grand entry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So it's it looks like you, you've 
very much strengthen the, the, the network of uh, sensory scientists and sensory professionals in, uh, in Ireland. So uh, yeah, it's very impressive. Um, congratulations for that. Um, so we have a few minutes for questions. Uh, so uh, there, I think there is one in the chat. Uh, this is from Viviani Rufo for Empower Tarega and it's a technical question. Does the group have, uh, that work on dysphagia focus on the quality of thickeners or the overall sensory quality of the preparation? Appearance, taste, and consistency. In overall, thanks for the question. I, I don't remember the name of the person who, who asked it. Can you repeat the name of the person? Who asked Viviani Rufo. Ah, Rufo, okay. Sure. So thanks for the question. So it's not only about thickeners, it's in general to improve the, the meals, because not only the thickeners of drinks, beverage, but also the sensory quality and the texture adequacy of the meals, trying to do meals that are not only pure, but other kind of foods that not only pure, that they usually have to eat only pure. So this is the, the challenge for people working in dysphagia. Okay, so not only thickeners. So if he wants to join or he's interested, he can ask me or ask to the to the society to do a society about that okay thank you thank you so are there any other questions for the presenters well, I, I do have one question i don't know if any of you want to answer that but uh I, I think that you all uh, emphasized uh, the, the networking and the collaboration uh, with uh, the different uh, societies and the E3As and the working groups. Um, so I would like to ask you if, what do you see or what do you expect uh, for the next 10 years <laughs> uh, as regards your uh, society in relation to E3As? wants to go first. I'm happy to go first, um, Julian. First of all, we're really excited about hosting um, Eurosense in 2024. And that'll be very much our focus for the next two years within E3S. And thereafter, maybe help and support other organizations in delivering um, Eurosense, support E3S in delivering their program events and hopefully get more involved in some of the European projects with some of our, our partners in, in E3S as well. All right. Thank you. And Annette or Empower. Okay. Yeah. I think it's a very good question, Julian, because for us, for example, the networking and the connection is quite important. So I think all members of AEPA, we are quite frustrated because we like to personally or presencially to see it, the others. And that's why I don't know how the future will be if we continue in this way. I know that the online meetings are quite success and so on but for us in fact we did we had to decide if we were changing from a online from a presencial conference to an online conference and we decided to postpone it because we uh, hope to do it because we enjoy and we do meals and dinners and so on but at the same time we make a lot of exchange we update uh, or what we are, or projects, and I know in at least in the in AEPAS, from from this conference there has been very a lot of collaboration for projects that had been funded by the ministry and so on. So I think if you don't, we need to to do to do network not online, but well we will see. I think this is a, I think all of us we are quite uh, tired of online conference and I don't know how we because at the end you don't you don't see the presentations you have no time to chat with people even if they there are different ways to they try to do some it's difficult to 
to have a talk more than five minutes with people. So yeah, yeah, I think we, we so, all look forward to that. <laughs> so it's a very good, it's a very good question. Your question, I, I for me, I this we will see what happened, but it's good to answer. But we need this. We didn't need. I think the EPAS members uh, continue doing that because, in fact, the three days conference and the courses are very good for all of us. So yeah. we, we will. But, but but let's be op optimistic. You know, I, yeah. I unfortunately I couldn't <laughs> attend, but I know the the French uh, uh, society organized a workshop when it was possible. There was a very short window in October last ah, year, and, and and everyone who attended was so happy to be there. Yes. <laughs> so let's hope for the future, and that that will soon be able to to do that again. Yes. Um, we will make think... up for it in Dublin, Amparo. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think we would so. like to support your optimism <laughs> heavily. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think that the exchange is the most most important thing. I think it, our slides did show uh, our interest in this, and and the the first uh, or the interesting project we had with the uh, Austrian society. We would like to to have more of this and and uh, well get really into 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 it. Yeah, I think as a, as a small country, we have to look across mm -hmm. the border and have to be international and mm -hmm. really use the, and, and live the exchanges we can have with like all the others within the E3S community. And as, as mentioned by Amparo, I think this emotional part where when you can meet and see each other, this is really mm -hmm. what, what mm -hmm. I think everybody is missing these days. Yeah. I, I agree. And networking is so important. And now living uh, outside of Europe, I can I can uh, say that uh, how important is this network and it's really uh, it's incredible, actually, and it's very, very precious, very unique. Um, so we shall all be happy and proud to uh, to belong to this network and to make it uh, alive. So uh, let's hope for the for the future. I'm very optimistic. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little bit naive, but <laughs> Let's 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 hope. Um, all right, so um, it's almost the end of time. Um, I see that Carolina uh, is adding a message. We're very excited about our next E3S seminar in May in Reading, and Eurosense conference in September in Turku. Yeah, uh, so we definitely hope to to see all of you in person there. Um, so with that, uh, I think it's time to conclude. I would like to uh, thank uh, Ejona for her assistance in the organization and uh, see you all for the next uh, workshop online. Thank Bye -bye. you all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. Nice Bye.